Hello again, YouTube. Welcome back, guys, to another video here on the channel today. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. I just uploaded a video a little while ago about the freshly molted rat snake that I found in the chicken coop today. Now, that snake did tag me just barely. I don't know if you can even see it. Maybe, maybe not. I have two small red spots there. That's from the bottom jaw. And right up top, on top of the Tasmanian Devil's foot there, is the teeth from the upper jaw. I mean, so he just barely, barely tagged me. He opened his mouth and he come forward just like this, hit and immediately backed off. Okay, it was just a warning. It wasn't a full-fledged bite. But sometimes they tend to get really aggressive if the weather's really warm. It's not too terribly hot today. And black snakes aren't really all that aggressive anyway. But there are some species of non-venomous snake here that are just really aggressive. They'll come at you. They'll go after you. Bull snakes will do that. And they'll hit and they'll bite and they'll clamp down and they'll start chewing. And if you don't let go of them, if chewing doesn't work... They'll start wiggling that head back and forth and just doing this and just mauling you. And this is, of course, all designed to get them or to get you to drop them. Okay. They don't want to be handled. They don't want to be picked up. So they want you to drop them. But I have a little bit of advice for you. If you ever pick up a snake that you know is non-venomous and it does tag you like that, when it's latched on and doing its thing, if it doesn't release right away, Try not to let go of it and drop it while it's still latched on, okay? Because a couple of things are going to happen. One, that snake still latched on to you when you drop and its body weight hits. All that body weight is going to be on those teeth. And when they bite, a lot of times... They're just like sharks. They lose all of their teeth and they're constantly regrowing and replacing. Well, when they feed, they latch onto something. A lot of times they lose teeth. The teeth come out and end up embedded in the skin of the prey. Okay. So if he drops suddenly or she, and they're not expecting you to drop but when you do, and they haven't released yet, they're going to pull quite a few teeth out. And those can be left embedded in the skin. Okay, that's going to set you up for possible infection. But even worse yet, as if they've latched on and they drop, those teeth are needles. Okay, they're extremely, extremely sharp. When the weight hits, those teeth will slice. Okay, they'll cut. And a cut is always worse than a puncture in such that there's more trauma over a larger area, so there's more chance of infection. Okay, I'm in Kansas. There are 42 species of snake confirmed to live in Kansas. There are only five that are venomous. Three of those are a species of rattlesnake. We have the prairie rattler, and we have the timber rattlesnake, and we have a smaller, almost a pygmy, type of rattlesnake it's called a masaga it's really small and we have the copperhead and we have either cottonmouth or water moxin whichever you choose to call it where you live they're exactly the same snake i get up people all the time try to say a copperhead is uh excuse me not a copperhead but they tried to tell me a water moxin and a cottonmouth are two different snakes no they're the same. The water moxin has a white mouth inside. That's why they're called a cotton mouth. That's kind of just another term. Just like here in Kansas, we call them bull snakes. Okay, from Kansas pretty much east, they're bull snakes. But you get over west toward Colorado and out toward California, they tend to call them gopher snakes. But again, those are used synonymously. A bull snake and a gopher snake are the same animal. Okay. Non-venomous bites like this, you treat them just as you would any other wound. If you had scratched yourself on a thorn out in the bush 
or it had you cut yourself on something, rock climbing, maybe you sliced yourself open, scraped yourself, whatever. You treat these superficial wounds from non-venomous snakes exactly the same way he would treat any other wound. With the exception that if you've been bitten and you had blood drawn, you're going to assume bacteria are present, infection is likely, and you're going to treat that wound accordingly, okay? You're going to assume that you could get an infection because you could. Their mouths aren't clean. They're full of bacteria, okay? Germs, things like that. Infection's always a possibility. A little bit of rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, something to clean the wound. I had a bull snake latch onto me one time and he broke off a lot of teeth. Matter of fact, that was right up here. And I sat one night with tweezers picking his teeth out of my skin. After I was sure I got all the teeth out, I put peroxide on it, let it boil out real good, triple antibiotic, went about my business, no problem. However, infection is always possible. If you can confirm for certain it's not a venomous snake bite, just treat it like any other wound. Clean it, little triple antibiotic, keep an eye on it. If it starts looking funny, maybe starts itching real bad or burning or anything like that, you get swelling, you get inflammation, you get redness, okay, you're gonna wanna go see your doctor. You're gonna wanna go possibly even to the hospital, to the emergency room to have them look at it. If you can't get into your doctor quickly enough, um, just like with anything else, okay? Keep an eye on it. If it looks like it's getting infected or possibly gonna cause you a problem, go seek medical treatment, all right? Now, when it comes to identification, there are 42 species of snake confirmed to live in Kansas, right? Do I know all 42? I do not. Most of them I've never seen or encountered. Pictures on the internet is the closest I've ever come. It is still very possible for me to walk out here and encounter a species that I've never seen before and look at it and be like, whoa, I've never seen one of those. Now, can I reach down and pick it up? Doesn't matter that I know what it is. It matters that I know what it isn't because what are my five venomous species? Okay, I'm looking at this thing. It's definitely not a copperhead. And I know it's not a rattlesnake. It's not one of the three species of rattlesnake we have. And it's definitely not a cottonmouth, okay? Maybe it's got some weird colors and some weird markings. Maybe it's got some purples or blues or something like that. Some coach whips sometimes have some really interesting colors. The racers have interesting colors. And, you know, even if I don't know what it is, I know what it's not, okay? Don't try to learn, well, this is a racer, it's harmless. This is a bull snake, it's harmless. This is a coach whip, it's harmless. This is a ring neck, it's harmless. This is a red-sided garter snake, it's relatively harmless, you know? Instead of trying to learn all the ones that are safe, relatively safe, I should say, learn the ones that aren't. Once you know those in your area, only five here in Kansas, okay? Five out of 42, that's not bad. That leaves 37 species of snake here that I can relatively safely handle. I'm going to get bit, that's just how it is. You know, at the end of the day, I've been handling these reptiles for well over 40 years, and I have been bitten well over 500 times, okay? Never once have I had to have medical treatment beyond what I did myself at home. I've never gotten infection. The worst I've had to do is sit with tweezers and dig some teeth out of my skin before I could treat, all right? So, if you happen to get bit by any snake and you are not absolutely certain what it was, just go to the hospital, okay? Go to the hospital, let them inspect the bite, and, you know, do what you got to do. I know a lot of people don't want to do that, but misidentifying a venomous snake as a non-venomous snake is a fatal mistake, okay? It can be a very fatal mistake. So anytime you're not sure, just go. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't know what you're doing, what you're looking at, what you're picking up, just leave it alone, okay? You can observe it from a distance. You don't need to actually pick it up. 
I've been doing this since my childhood and just here in the States, okay? Now, if I was in another country, if I was in South America, someplace like that, I wouldn't pick up a damn thing that I wasn't 1000% sure what it was because there are things there I've never seen that'll kill me very quickly. Here though, I know what I'm doing. I know what's safe to touch and what's not, okay? Um, but yeah, just treat those wounds just like you would any other. Take care of them, triple antibiotic, things like that. Uh, leave them alone if you don't know what you're doing. Just don't touch, okay? Take photographs. Everybody's got a smartphone. That's what I'm filming on right now, my iPhone, okay? Take some, say, take some pictures and show them off. Post them on Facebook, whatever. But don't reach down and pick them up if you don't have to, okay? I know I say that, but I do it. I do it a lot, but I've been doing it for decades, okay? So, anyway... Thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget, if you like the video and you want to subscribe to the channel, reach down and hit that button for me. Ding the notification bell if you want to get notified when I upload you know, future videos. Select all notifications and questions or comments or anything. Hit me up down there below. I thank you guys very much for watching. I thank you all for your views, for your support. And I will see you all in the next one.